Welcome to welcome to five minute school and in today's video we're going to be talking about edemas This is the first video I'm going to be making on an edema I might make some separate ones on different types of edemas like renal edemas and cardiac edemas But firstly, I think I'm just going to introduce you to what an edema actually is and then maybe in future I might make some other videos, but anyway, let's talk about an edema in general for now so the definition of an edema is an abnormal and excessive accumulation of free fluid in the interstitial tissue spaces and serous cavities. So when we have this accumulation of fluid in the interstitial tissue spaces, um, it's usually between the cells and it can be displaced from one place to another. So in the case of these kind of edemas, if you put your finger over the like swelling it produces a depression and you can see it in the picture here on the right someone's put their finger on the leg and you can see there's like a little like um, space which has been formed it's known as a depression and this is called a pitting edema but this is just one type of edema you can also get a non-pitting edema where if you put your finger on like the edema there wouldn't be any depression so um, those kind of edemas um, are called non-pitting edemas uh, an example of two of those is mycoedema and elephantiasis um, when you have the accumulation of the free fluid in the body cavities it depends on which body cavity the fluid has accumulated in but they are given different names so it's called acytes if it's in the peritoneal cavity it's called uh, hydrothorax or pleural effusion if it's in the pleural cavity and it's called hydropericardium or pericardial effusion if it's in the pericardial cavity. Now, moving on from this, uh, you have two types of edema, um, whether it's localized or generalized. Um, localized, obviously, it means it's limited to an organ or a limb. Examples can be lymphatic edema, inflammatory edema, or allergic edema. And you can have a generalized edema, otherwise known as anasarca or dropsy, and that's when it's systemic in distribution and it's quite noticeable in subcutaneous uh, subcutaneous tissues. So, for example, renal edema, cardiac edema, and nutritional edema. Now, when we're talking about the fluid which is actually moving out and into these spaces, there's two different types of fluid it can be. It can either be transudate or exudate. So I'm going to tell you about the composition of those. So if it's transudate, the filtrate, um, it's actually a filtrate of blood plasma without any changes in endothelial permeability. It's uh, considered to be a non-inflammatory edema if it's transudate. So there's a low protein content and the main protein in it is albumin and there's low amounts of fibrinogen. So because there's low amounts of fibrinogen, it's, it has a low tendency to coagulate. Um, the glucose content is the same as plasma, the pH is greater than 7.3 and there's low LDH and generally a few amount of cells and the main cells in there are mesothelial cells and just cell debris. Exudate on the other hand, it's the edema of inflamed tissue and it's associated with increased vascular permeability. It's an inflammatory edema so it has a high protein content. Obviously there'll be high amounts of uh, high fib uh, fibrinogen that's the main protein, so it's going to easily coagulate, and it'll also contain some other coagulation factors. Um, there will be low amounts of glucose, the pH will be less than 3. It'll have a high LDH on the other hand, and many cells, which include the inflammatory and parenchymal cells.